Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The concept of chemical evolution is based on crystallization of chemicals, interaction of water, air and clay under intense heat, effect of solar radiation on chemicals, possible origin of life by combination of chemicals under suitable environmental conditions. So what is chemical evolution? So chemical evolution is uh, the concept of formation of complex organic molecules from simpler inorganic ones through chemical reactions in oceans during the early history of the earth. So chemical evolution is during the early history of earth where from simple inorganic molecules, complex organic molecules were formed. So the period of chemical evolution lasted for less than a billion years. So out of these options, obviously option D is the right option. So it, it talks about the origin of life by combination of chemicals under suitable environmental conditions. Question number 12. Evolutionary history of an organism is known as phylogeny. So the term phylogeny is derived from a Greek word phylo, which means tribe or race. So the his evolutionary history is called phylogeny. So besides that, you have options like ancestry. Ancestry is like uh, it's something which belongs to your ancestors and then to their ancestors and so on. Uh, it, when you talk about paleontology, it talks about the study of fossils. So uh, paleontology is study of fossils. Ontogeny is study of life history of organisms. But when you talk about evolutionary history, that means how that entire race evolved. So that is phylogeny. So the word phylo is derived from a Greek word which means race. So overall, it talks about the evolutionary history of a race of individuals or a race of organisms. Question number 13. Which one of the following is not a living fossil? King crab, sphenodon, archipteryx or peripatus. So which is not a living fossil? So obviously the right option is archipteryx because this is not a living, fo living fossil. So what is archipteryx? So this is the picture of uh, archipteryx and it is a traditional fossil that existed between birds and reptiles. So this acted as a connection or a connecting link between birds and reptiles because it has certain features which were like birds. For example, presence of feathers, four limbs modified into wings. So presence of feathers and wings uh, resembled them with birds. Whereas there were certain features like presence of a long tail, reptile-like teeth, presence of free caudal vertebrae. So all of these made them look like reptiles. Now since Archipteryx had uh, both features of birds and reptiles, so it acted as a connecting link between them. And this was not a living fossil. Now rest of these the king crab. What is king crab? It is a large sized crab like crustaceans which is generally found in cold seas. So it is a 10 footed crab. So it has 10 feet. So 10 footed crab and it's huge in size. But this is a living fossil. If you talk about sphenodon, so this is again a living fossil and it resembles lizards. What about peripatus? So peripatus is another living fossil which is a link between annelids and arthropods. That is it has certain characters similar to annelids and certain characters similar to arthropods. Now okay we have answered this but do I hope all of you know what exactly is a living fossil. So fossil you all know the remains of a plant or animal the dead remains basically that is called fossil. Living fossil means any living species of organisms that appear to be the same as a species only known from fossils and it has no close living relatives. So it is a living organism. So a living species of organisms which has like which is very close or it appears to be almost the same as a species which is known only from fossils. So that is called a living fossil. So here king crabs, phenodon, peripatus, these are all examples of living fossil. But Archipteryx is not a living fossil. It is a traditional fossil which acts as a connecting link between birds and reptiles. Question number 14. Which of the following is the relatively most accurate method for dating of fossils? 
रेडियो कार्बन मेथड पोटेशियम आर्गन मेथड इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेजोनेंस मेथड यूरेनियम लेट मेथड सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ऑल ऑफ दीज मेथड्स एंड व्हाट वी हैव ऑब्जर्व वी हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेजोनेंस मेथड इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्यूरेट मेथड एंड देर इज ऑल्सो वन एडवांटेज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेजोनेंस मेथड ओवर आदर मेथड्स दैट इट इज इट कैन बी यूज टू date fossils or it can be used to date newly formed materials so that's one additional advantage question number 15 using imprints from a plate with complete medium and carrying bacteria colonies you can select streptomycin resistant mutants and prove that such mutations do not originate as adaptation these imprints need to be used on plates with and without streptomycin on plates with minimal medium on plates with streptomycin only on plates without streptomycin so what is streptomycin it is an antibiotic so a plate with streptomycin is kept so only the streptomycin resistant bacteria will be able to grow so in bacteria you have two categories of bacteria so right now we are basically talking about two categories of bacteria one is streptomycin resistant bacteria the other one is streptomycin non resistant bacteria so if you grow the resistant bacteria and the non resistant bacteria on a plate with streptomycin then what will happen the resistant bacteria will be able to grow because they are resistant to antibiotics so they will grow but the non resistant ones will not grow now if you take it on a plate without streptomycin what will happen both of these will grow so you will anyways not be able to differentiate between the resistant and the non resistant ones so therefore in order to differentiate between the two so what we need to do we need to uh, use them on plates with streptomycin because with streptomycin the resistant bacteria will grow only the resistant ones will grow and the non resistant ones will not grow question number 16 what kind of evidence suggested that man is more closely related with chimpanzee than with other hominoid apes evidence from dna from sex chromosomes only comparison of chromosomes morphology only evidence from fossil remains and the fossil mitochondrial dna alone evidence from dna extracted from sex chromosomes autosomes and mitochondria so let us quickly look at the similarities between humans and chimpanzees so when you look at the human chromosomes and compare it with the chimpanzee chromosomes what do you see the pattern of the chromosomes are almost similar except for slight difference in chromosome number 2 so in humans you have only one chromosome 2 whereas in chimpanzee you have 2a 2b right other than that you know the pattern of chromosomes almost matches yeah so what are the things that we are comparing so we are definitely comparing the autosomes because all these 22 pairs these are autosomes and then you have this which is nothing but sex chromosomes and what is this m this is nothing but the mitochondrial dna so basically we are comparing the autosomes the sex chromosomes and also the mitochondria so which is the right option evidence from dna extracted from sex chromosomes autosomes and mitochondria all of these suggest that man and chimpanzee are closely related because you can see it for yourself the autosomes are almost similar except for chromosome number 2 sex chromosomes again are quite similar mitochondrial dna is also quite similar Question number seventeen. In recent years, DNA sequences, nucleotide sequence of mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes were considered for the study of human evolution because they can be studied from the sample of fossil remains. They are small and therefore easy to study. They are uniparental in origin and do not take part in recombination. Their structure is known in greater detail. Now, what is this empty DNA? so this refers to the mitochondrial dna and mitochondrial dna is maternal in origin so mitochondrial dna is the dna that is found in mitochondria so mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell so it is a cell organelle 
Now, most of the DNA in a cell is located inside the nucleus. So in most species, including humans, mitochondrial DNA is inherited solely from the mother through the egg cell because the egg cell has a lot of, uh, you know, but the egg cell is quite bigger. So it has more prominent cell organelles and mitochondria is one such cell organelle. So the DNA present in mitochondria that gets inherited from the mother. Now, since animal mitochondrial DNA evolves faster than the nuclear genetic make markers, therefore it plays a very important role in determining the relatedness or the relationship between populations. So obviously, uh, one important reason is that for, uh, the, for considering mitochondrial DNA is that it is maternal in origin. That means here you do not have recombination. Whatever is there in the mother, it will get transmitted through the next generation through the egg cell. So that is one advantage. Now, what about the Y chromosomes? So if you look at the Y chromosomes, so Y chromosomes are not present in the mother because Y chromosomes are only present in males. So Y chromosomes are paternal in origin. So if you look at both mitochondria as well as Y chromosomes, they both had uniparental in origin. Uni means one. So they had origin from only one parent. Now since they are coming from only one parent, so there would be no recombination because normally for all other um, uh, chromosomes, one homologue comes from the mother and the other one comes from the father. Right? But in this case, if it is mitochondrial DNA, it will come from the mother only. If it is a Y chromosome, it will come from the father only. So since they are uniparental in origin and do not take part in recombination, therefore these days, these are used to study the human uh, evolution. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.